Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE live here in San Francisco for Google Cloud coverage, exclusive coverage for three days. Day two, this is Google Next, hashtag Google Next 18, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Orientation is the Director of Product Management at Google. Uh, has been in the cloud business uh, since I could remember cloud being cloud. A uh, variety of great career positions. Here now at Google doing product management. Giving a talk on stage today in the keynote around serverless, around all the cool things going on. Oren, great to see you, thanks for it's coming on. Good to on. see you again as well. So I know you got a hard stop, you got another press briefing, but I want to get out on the table real quick. Break down the news, the hard news, what happened today set of announcements around what you were talking about with serverless and some of the cool things that are going on at that level. Yeah, so you know, serverless is foundational to what we're doing at Google. The reality is that it, we started on serverless before it even had that term. You know, App Engine was the OG serverless, if you will, right? and it's been around for 10 years. Uh, so what we've really been doing is trying to modernize and bring this to market. So we had a huge suite of announcements that came out today. Uh, we announced that Google Cloud Functions is GA. We announced App Engine Standard, which is this original product, has a whole suite of new languages and capabilities. Uh, we announced, of course, this new add-on for GKE, because one of the questions that comes up all the time is, I love the idea of serverless, but how do I move it around? Am I stuck in one place? So with the GKE add-on, you can make your, take your workloads and move it into GKE. And then finally. On-prem too? On-prem too. Okay. And then finally, we announced the Knative uh, open source project. And what that is, is the underpinnings of what makes up serverless, and that's something we've been working on with IBM and SAP, a whole bunch of partners, uh, to try and move the future of serverless together forward in a portable open way. Well, congratulations on the functions. That got a big applause. Yeah. Actually, the Knative also got a great applause. Explain Knative, let's double down on that for a second. I want you to get that out. That's super important. What's that open source project about? Where did it originate from? What's the purpose? What's the plans? Yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, in some sense, if you're watching this, I almost, you shouldn't even care about Knative, right? So Knative is infrastructure. And sometimes I think we get caught up in infrastructure because it's exciting, but as a developer, as a user, it's almost irrelevant. What Knative is, is it's the building blocks for serverless. And so the key is, there's lots and lots of companies today that are building serverless products. We're building them, Red Hat's building them, IBM, everyone's building serverless products. And what we want to make sure is that customers have the ability to seamlessly move between them, that they can take advantage of serverless without being feeling trapped. So they can so download the source code and maybe modify it. It feels a little bit like OpenStack in a way. So OpenStack is using Knative moving forward. So the whole idea is this is an underpinning to give you common control plane APIs as well as execution APIs, as, long as, as well as a reference implementation that everyone can build off of the shared pieces together. Where serverless meets Kubernetes. Where yes? serverless meets right. Kubernetes. And let's be clear, Kubernetes is the orchestration layer for people who care. And so for people who care, now you have a serverless layer on top. And for people who don't care, you come to a cloud vendor and we're going to hide all of that for you. But you can still have the exact same control APIs. So if you think about it, you're writing, you're writing things, I have 20 functions and I write scripts to manage all of those. You can now have the same APIs to manage them everywhere. So for the folks that are out there going, okay, hey, you know, we saw Amazon with Lambda, all the serverless craze. How do I get involved? What does serverless mean for me vis-a-vis -vis what Google's offering? How would you answer that question? I would say start out with App Engine Cloud Functions. Those are our GA shipping products. They're scalable, they serve 350 billion requests every single day. This is the, this is the reality of where you get started. They support a wide range of languages, they're battle tested, they're available in multiple regions. This, is, this isn't a science experiment, this is real. That's where everyone should start. And then you can step from there and say, oh, but maybe I have my own Kubernetes cluster and I want to look at the add-on. Maybe I have my own, uh, my own GK cluster. Maybe I have my own Kubernetes cluster running on-prem. Maybe um, you're doing something really unique and that's when you start getting into more of the infrastructure pieces. I want to get to, uh, your reaction to a, a comment I heard in the hallways at an event just recently, um, we're talking about um, Spunk yeah. Uh, functions as a service kind of area. Uh, and the comment was, man, that's awesome. Startup's going to love that. And the person said to me, actually the adoption we're seeing is from enterprises more than startups and the, you know, the alpha developers. Um, do you see the same thing? And if so, why would enterprises be more interested in functions and serverless than startup? Because startups are always the early adopters, I get that. But the uptake on serverless and, and functions has been much higher on the enterprise side. It, Is there it, a rationale? Right. What's your thoughts on it? What's your reaction? Well, I think there's a number of things going on, including in some places this dichotomy between startups and enterprises is maybe not the right one, right? And the reality is that there are developers looking to take advantage of the latest technologies everywhere. 
And in some ways it's almost demeaning to talk about startups as these staid, incapable of innovating companies because the reality is we see amazing developers everywhere. And so that, that's one aspect. Another is that function solves a real problem right now that customers are having. And that is you are already doing a lot of DevOps orchestration work quite often and you're running that on a server somewhere and it's just a mess, right? You might have cron jobs, you might have scripts running, you might have something, even some, ironically, we've actually known people running servers under the desk to manage their stuff in the cloud. I mean, we've heard crazy stuff like that. <laughs> and so giving these ops teams an instant place to run it without ever having to worry about it again, it's a no-brainer for them. They instantly pick it up. So, you know, you, I'm smiling because, you know, we go back, just go back to rewind the clock to 2008, really where the word infrastructure as code really started to get uh, in, the, the, in the inner circle of the cloud. It was on certainly before that, but you know, from 08 to like 2011, that became the mantra for, for DevOps, infrastructure as code. We're here, I mean, we're seeing it now. Cisco's here, providing network support. I mean, where are we? I mean, in your view, obviously it's happening, Where's the reality, where's the work to be done, and where's the fantasy of... So um, much work to be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is just the product manager in me, yeah. <laughs> but I have to say, when I look out, I feel like we're 5% you know, of the way up this mountain right now. <laughs> Um, and if that just means that in yeah. 2008 we didn't we, we didn't even know we were on the right. You got to say that right? more hiring racks up open. You got to get more people hired in. No, but I mean it's more reality now than ever before. You're starting to see that. I mean, obviously, that's right. Where's that reality line go to? Where experimentation, and then ultimately the the moonshot. You know, if we if we look at the cross and the chasm model. We're still in the early adopters, there's no doubt. Now, again, I want to split out that early adopters don't mean startups. Early adopters can mean forward-thinking uh, enterprises. Uh, and we're seeing this happen across the board, or even within an enterprise company. I mean, I see this very aggressively where there's no, even a company itself isn't a monolith, right? And so there's a team that's picking it up and trying this out, and then they disseminate that out. I think what we're seeing is a combination of uh, infrastructure as code, DevOps practices, Concepts like SRE, which Aparna and Ham were talking about, these all come together and you can take advantage of serverless as part of that. And so the more, you know, each piece is great and when it's one plus one plus one equals 20. And so we're seeing that multiplicative factor coming out as so well. So if I'm an enterprise CIO, I, I want to get in. Yep. Where do you want to take it? You know, what's the vision? Where, where should I get started? So where you get started is I'd say is you have things running today that this is an instant fit for. You can look at small infrastructure changes, small orchestration pieces that you're doing. As well, you know, there's always this, always this incredible split that's happened between, you have your hardcore investment that's going on, you, know, you have your ERP systems, you're, let's be honest, you're never touching them, right? That's never changing. But you're doing innovation around it, right? You're thinking about how do I integrate this? What's the next in the future? And every time you're thinking about that, you should be thinking about serverless. And in fact, that's what you can see partners like SAP doing. I don't know if you saw the Kima announcement sure, from SAP, yep. right? That's exactly what that story is about. So what we see all the time is, one, take a look at some of this infrastructure orchestration, take a look at the DevOps pieces, and two, look at how you're extending the investments you already made, and do it incrementally, because what you'll find is you can do something quick and easy, you know, get started in a week, and then the next thing you know, like, that was just one thing, and then I have 10 things, then I have 100 things, and you're like, wait, I'm actually maybe putting the majority of my effort into serverless now. Great, yeah, what's great. the most important story for you here at the show? You need to boil it down to the, the most relevant, the biggest story um, that, that you're telling here? We care about our customers. You know, there's a meta point. I think that cloud, in general, is a story of enablement, right? This isn't, hey, look at our cool products. I don't care about our products. Oh, well, some cool products, though. There are some cool products. <laughs> but it's in the service of, how do we make our customers successful? And we're not doing the perfect job. I think we could be doing 10 times better highlighting what our customers are doing. But it's a story about our customers and that's what we're here for. And that's when you look around, yeah. what we're doing is here and for then the And you can see the visibility in Google Cloud, obviously. A lot's gestated over two years. Diane's here, a lot that's of enterprise right. chops are coming in. Uh, you're here, we had Aparna, she's enterprise. She's amazing, that's uh, right. Total enterprise uh, leader. Just great people coming in. Right. It seems to be a much different, and they got the, I love the term, OG, the App Engine. That's right. So App Engine's still kind of hanging around. It's not doing just its hanging thing. around, it's exploding. Yeah. It's, it's exploding. doing okay. great, <laughs> and customers love it. I mean, we, the applause and the excitement we get, yeah. I mean, the reality is it was a little bit getting tired for a while, and we've reinvigorated it, and we're seeing this explosion of love come out for it now. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Good to see Google bring out the big guns, the focus of data, big advantage, yep. uh, large scale, horizontally scalable, low latency capabilities. Really, this is the cloud magic happening again, early. That's right. You got a lot more work to do. There's so much what, we can what's do. What's on the roadmap? Give us a give peek into the roadmap. What's going on? What's your priorities? Yeah, so my priorities are, I really think that 
50 plus percent of workloads should be serverless. There's a lot of work we need to get there, right? We need to be able to run more things. We need to be able to run it in more places. We need to be able to, as you have these serverless things, you're actually creating your own problems, right? Now it gets more complicated, you have microservices, how do you have, are we actually turning what was single app development into a distributed systems problem, which we know is like the worst kind of problems? Yeah, yeah. How do we up-level our development teams yeah. that our customers have so that they can make the simple choices in these relatively complicated systems. So that's what we're trying to do. Run anything, run it anywhere, and not worry about the complexity. And the automation and the AI really plays a big role there. I got yeah. it, yeah, big Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Oren, thanks for coming on. Great, great to see you. Say hello to Olivia for us. I will do. Good, good, good to see you guys in a while. Great to see you. It's great to see you, the thank Cube you. Here, uh, coverage here, Google Cloud here in San Francisco, the Cube Live coverage. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Go to siliconangle.com. We have great stories. We've got a cloud series, journalist special over there, a lot of reporting, a lot of news and analysis. Of course, thecube.net for all videos on demand after the show. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break.